Let's do that. Okay, so uh, I welcome you all. Um, today it is going to be a talk on. Uh, I mean, not exactly talk because Python cannot really be covered uh, in so small amount of time because Python is so huge. But still, I would like to give some taste of uh, the strength or how powerful Python programming is or, or Python by itself is. So, so this will basically cover all the basics. So, so you can interrupt me at, at any point of time because uh, this will be kind of informal, not not very formal. Because I will also show you some examples or the power of or the strength of Python, as you will see. So, so okay. So I welcome you all. Um, okay. So, so what is Python? So, I mean, first first thing is we will not go too much into what is python and the history of python so i will only use let's say only one slide for that but uh, we will mostly be concerned about what python can do for you and and as you will see python once you learn python uh, so as as i was also discussing the last in in the last meeting so once you know python you know uh, how to solve differential equations you know how to do curve fitting you know how to uh, perform numerical integration so it's okay it, it's so powerful so let me not get ahead of myself and and let me now talk about what is python so python is a high level language so let's say c plus plus fortran etc are low level languages because there are many layers in between so once you use python it's almost like uh, writing english and and there are so many layers in between so python does not directly interact with the uh, with the computer i mean in in terms of 1010 part but there are many layers in between so yeah th this is what i this is what we need to know but then it makes it a bit slower so if you were to write a, a program in fortran or c++ and the same program in python the python program will be very short and it is possible that the fortran program or the c++ program is a bit large but then the program in c++ or the fortran will run very fast but then you have to write a lot in that program as well so so the so the philosophy emphasizes readability so for example here uh, i mean i've taken just one section of of a program so this just prints the value of i and uh, so i goes from 0 to 5 and it will not consider 5 so it will print 0 1 2 3 4 so so this is an example from the c++ code and this is what you write in um, python so so it, it's so simple like you like you have to specify the range and you don't have to write all this i plus plus i should be less than five and so on so if you do this then uh, i will take uh, values from zero one two three four and five and it was first of all conceived by a person uh, a danish person guido van possum uh, and it so one thing is but one more difference between this and this is that in this case indentation really doesn't matter but indentation is mostly for um, understanding the program well but it's uh, very important or um, how to say that uh, if you do if you do not do indentation in python the program or the compiler will show you an error an error so it's very mandatory in, in python and, and it was not that important in fortran or c++ or other low level languages it was mostly for reading purposes so it will if you do indentation the program uh, the, the readability of the program improves okay okay so now some basics of python installation so python is available uh, throughout the uh, i mean for windows macintosh and also ubuntu and it's free so you can use it and you, and you can also develop it it's completely free so you, you don't you don't have to pay anything for it like uh, let's say you have to purchase origin you have to purchase matlab so if once you know how to use python you will you will stop using matlab trust me you will use you will stop using origin because i've done myself i mean i was using matlab for quite a long time but when i switched to uh, python uh, it seems but i mean i'm i i'm asking question to myself why i was even using matlab before okay so uh, so in order to install uh, on on any of these platforms you can just install anaconda and if you want to install extra packages then 
there is a package manager in, in Anaconda. So you just have to install packages, for example, SciPy, NumPy, or Pandas. So the some of the packages will be by default installed, but not all of them will be by default installed. So for example, SciPy will not be there in the, um, the base package. You, you may have to install it. And similarly, the Pandas. So Pandas, as I will talk about it later. So Pandas is used for <clears throat> file writing and reading, importing and exporting, as we will see. So yes, as I just said, it will kind of install everything that you will need, OK? And it has package manager. And one important thing is uh, the, the Jupyter Notebook. So uh, so if you install Anaconda, you can Jupyter Notebook will automatically be installed. So you don't have, you don't have to install it separately. And as you will see, Jupyter Notebook uh, makes, uh, how to say that? So if you use the Jupyter Notebook, you can do block programming. So you don't you don't have to run the whole code in one go. You can just run some blocks at a time, as I will show in, in the example. So um, Python has many, many packages and features. So it's it could be impossible to even take a whole semester to cover all those aspects. But then, so let's say it, it can do contraplot, as I will show, file export, import. You can write functions. You can write Lambda functions. You can even run. Uh, parallel codes, curve fitting, you can generate random numbers, Gaussian random numbers, or you can have your own ways because there are, um, I'm not able to recall what is that algorithm. So there is an algorithm according to which, so using that you can generate uh, random numbers um, according to some given probability distribution function. Okay, so so maybe it, it, you, may, you may not need it, but, but because we need, so that's why I, I just said about it. And you can put legends in the plot, interpolation, optimization. Optimization means curve fitting, etc. You can you, you can also do smoothing of the curves, and so on. Okay, and so these are various features of these packages. Let's say NumPy, Pandas, Math, AstroPy, SciPy, Cam, Heal, HealPy, and Sys. So I'll mostly so so mostly so as I said, these are the packages. So. So I will not be able to cover all of these packages today, and perhaps you will not need them at any rate. So those can be covered in in some uh, in an advanced uh, talk on Python programming. So I'll primarily be interested in uh, Matplotlib, which I think I have not written here. Okay. So Matplotlib, uh, as we, as we will see, because Matplotlib is a very powerful package for literally making any kind of plot. Okay. And NumPy is for array management. Uh, and astro, you have also astropy and math, scipy, and healpy. So healpy and cam are, are kind of a specialized for my research, for example. So cam is also specialized for my my uh, cosmology research and uh, astropy also. Okay, so let me give you some examples now. Uh, so so the examples that will follow will include uh, examples. So the I'm talking about the live examples will include. Array manipulation using NumPy. So SciPy can be used for integration, interpolation, and you can also use it for special functions like Bessel functions or the genre polynomials, and also for curve fitting, as we will see. And Matplotlib for plotting purposes, Pandas for file import and, and writing, because you will also need, let's say you have a data file, you want to import it in the Python program, and you make plots out of it, you, you have to perform analysis on it. So now let me give some examples. So this is the first example. So what matplotlib can do, okay? So, I mean, uh, this is what, I mean, so so this is the plot that I will, uh, that I'm going to use in my own research. So this, uh, so so let's not get into the detail of, of what these quantities are, uh, but just let me tell you that this is some quantity. Let's say this is y, or let's say z is a function of x and y. So this is the energy of the dark matter. Lambda is, some observed wavelength and this is spectral spectral intensity yes so then uh, i'm wearing this let's say this this quantity and wearing is at a function of lambda so this can be done in math so one more example is you can make contour plots so this is what i also used in my research so as you know what contour plots are perhaps you already know what contour plots are so but mat matplotlib can do all this the other example would be so this is the Malvedi projection. So so this so this was done using Healpy. One more example would be Gaussian fitting. So 
so in so in these plots so these are some histograms and using a python code you can make a uh, gaussian fitting so so this we have also used in my research the other would be so let's say filling certain regions so let's say your uh, code uh, or, or rather plot demands that you need to uh, specify some certain regions so that can also be done and you can also write um, text on on your plot for example for example i've written and you can and you can also use latex so so you can uh, write latex text using python how good it is and you can also make uh, subplots so as i've done here so so you also you also have this legend here so and you can insert two plots in a single plot so so this is one first subplot and the second subplot and you can also specify what the um the label on the x and the y axis as i've done here so this is the label on the y axis and this is the label on the x axis and you can also um show the legend okay so now uh so now some examples okay so for 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 uh, for that i'll uh, just minimize it and i will launch jupyter notebook okay so <clears throat> uh but but then perhaps for that you may need to learn some basic commands but then it should not be that difficult okay so before we continue do you have any questions to ask anyone no sir okay yeah now, now you will see what 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 python can do and i will show you what python can do live okay uh okay so so let me just launch the so so i'm no, so i'm launching now the the jupyter notebook okay so jupyter notebook will usually open in your web browser oh are you still able to see no maybe not can you see my screen yes okay sir yes, i can see it can... jupyter is open okay okay local okay. host jupyter okay so so this is how the jupyter notebook looks like okay uh okay so now so now so so let me start with this so one thing that you, or one difference that you can see from here is that let's say if it was a python code sorry a c++ code or a fortran code then you then you need to specify then you need to specify okay so so then you need to specify what kind of uh, variable is this so let's say you would write uh, some let's say integer int x and then you can assign values to it but it's not it's not the case in uh, python so you can directly assign values to a variable so i have assigned x 3.4 some float y this is an irrational number np dot pi okay so before that so there are some basic things to be done okay let me show you this okay so by default uh, the base package is loaded so when you launch python only base packages are loaded so in order to Uh, load more packages you you need to import them so here i'm importing numpy as np so np will become a prefix so let's say i'm i'm running this okay so now it has imported numpy as np and now i can use uh, this this thing np.py and and you can now print the values or maybe you can let's say uh, or maybe okay and and you can also do this so numpy all, has also some functions in built in it so let's say np dot sign of uh, np dot pi by two so what what answer should we get now can anyone say i'm evaluating sign of pi by two what answer should we get one hmm okay so yes, this is one. one okay so this is one okay and and it it has like log log exponential and many many different functions that you can explore by yourself okay so so you can explore uh, so so you can explore whatever you like so so first of all we are talking about numpy and okay so this is first mark and and then you can also print the values because if you recall in uh, for example c++ you have to specify what kind of output do you want to have or what kind of variable are x, variables are x y and z but here you don't have to do that so you just write print x y z and it will just give you the answer so here i've done so x was 3.4 y was uh, just pi so it's here and z was equal to 3 an integer so and in it does the job 
So now some more functionalities of NumPy. Uh, so NumPy is also used for storing arrays. Okay. So here I've done that. So so this is uh, so so this is a method in NumPy package. This this thing. This is called linspace. So what linspace will do? It will take uh, 100 points between minus 2 and 2. Okay. So this is the starting point. This is the ending point. It will help it and it will divide this region into 100 points. So if I if I run this and 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 to run this, I'm using command enter. Okay. In in Mac it is command enter. So perhaps you will also have some uh, something to run in Windows or Ubuntu, but in Macintosh it is command enter. Okay, so uh, let's say now. So now you so let's say you want to see what what x well is. So here I'm, here I'm printing it. So you, so it starts from minus two, and it goes till two, and divide the whole region into hundred equally spaced parts. So this is what test done. Okay, so this is the lens space, and now and now I can just perform uh, operations on arrays. So here it is x well, and I'm Evaluating y uh, equals sine of x, so I can evaluate just array in one go. Okay, because it turns out that if you uh, that the array operation, if you if you have done some programming in MATLAB, if you recall, performing uh, operations in using for loops is a bit slow, but if you use array operation as far as possible, then it will be extremely fast. So here, and the same thing is happening. So here I'm passing the whole array. So this is an array. I'm passing this to np dot sign. It will and it will compute sign of all these values. Okay. And and as you and, and and you will see later what I've done. And this is what exponential of x. So this is sine x. This is exponential x. And when I plot, you will see what I've done. And this is and I've and I've defined a new array by myself. So let's say array containing this two, three, four, five, and forty-five. And I can access any element of the array. So in Python, uh, index starts from zero. So this is the first element, and I can also print, let's say, uh, third element. So third element should be five. I mean third. I mean fourth. So for third, for fourth element, the index would be three. Okay. And any questions till now? Any questions till now? No, I don't have. Okay, fine. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> so now let me yeah. So and this is very very important uh, aspect of Python. So I so I can define functions and lambda function. So it so you will find it extremely extremely useful because many times we need to perform some operations again and again. So we don't have to. So you don't have to write uh, the same code for performing those operations. So in those cases, we we write uh, functions. And by the way, I, I'm assuming that all of us, all of you, have some basic uh, experience in programming in either of the languages. Can it can be C++ or Fortran or any other language? Is it true? It's not true. Oh, uh, you have you haven't any experience in any of the languages? No, no, I don't have, but I will go up with somehow. Oh, uh, so no so issue, have... no issue. But, uh, Sorry, I will try to understand as much as possible. You don't try to go so low, otherwise, other people will uh, feel very bored. Uh, yeah, no, no, it, it's not that case. But... Nothing, nothing, nothing as such. Uh, what Rahul Bhai is asking, if we at all we have some fundamental something. Anyway, I, I have learned from him only this fundamentals. But if you do not know, also you can learn it. It's not a matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that is also true. So, so you can even start with Python, you, even if you have not done any kind of programming, you you can start with Python. But, but then, you see, um, uh, okay, please allow me to say this, but. So it, it's about uh, so if you keep learning new things, so you will so you will just yes. so, so you will just improve yourself because at one point of time if you are kind of reluctant in learning new things, then you will you will rely on others. 
that's in my opinion no, it is not very good thing because you it's not useful and it's actually bad for the improvement of the yeah, yeah i will learn i will start with python if it's possible i was thinking that maybe we need a, some uh, pre information about other languages also. no no that's not true that's not true so i mean even if you if, even if you don't have any prior experience with python if you just start it if you just start using it so and yeah start using it so if you start using it in your research then you will then you will certainly improvise you will you will start learning new things from it so so okay. unless you use it you will not understand or learn it. Yeah. okay yeah yeah that, that, yeah that will be and 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 an and important thing is if you don't know something then you will always have to find some person who learns who who has uh, who has learned that thing already which is not always possible so it's better to learn as far as possible and it and it will really give you a lot of confidence that you can do a, uh, i mean as far as the programming is concerned and plot part is concerned solving differential equations curve fitting etc it's concerned you can do everything on your own you don't have to rely on any other person okay so and so so let me now talk about this this uh, this function lambda function so so if i compare it with if you if you had a prior experience with matlab programming so you may recall that in matlab in order to call functions you have to write uh gyanthi can you please uh, turn the um, voice off because oh, thank you okay so um Hmm. so so if you recall if you do matlab programming you have to write functions in a separate file and then you can call that function into the main file uh, in which you are working but that's that's very clumsy i mean i i don't know why matlab people have not done that as of now so that's why i have stopped using so that was one of the reasons i stopped using matlab that was certainly very idiot idiotic i mean why would you write so many different files for using different functions but it's not the case in python so python has also that capability so you can write the uh, function in one file and then you can use it anywhere in the file so here i've done that so this is some kind of function so so you can think of functions the mathematical functions let's say sin x cos x or x square x square plus 3 so i've defined two functions here so in order to uh, run the function i just have to write func1 so so what func1 does it it just uh, does the operation x goes to x plus 3 so if i put 1 i'll get 4 if i put 1.1 i'll get as you know 4.1 okay and and i can and i can do whatever i want to do in, inside the function i can i can return arrays i can make plots i can do whatever i want to do okay and this is uh, a lambda function okay so lambda function is kind of in one line function so you you write it in this way so in in our case it will it will give you the square of a number so let's say if i put uh 2 what should i get 4 oh. okay so it's working then and and then you can you can make these functions as complicated as you want so maybe i'll i'll show you i'll show you some examples from from my own research so 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 these are uh, very very indispensable yeah, these are very very important aspects of the python programming so uh, okay so so this is one thing so i've talked about numpy numpy here and i've and i talked about defining various functions including lambda functions so now one more important one one very important thing is defining dictionaries so dictionaries can store all kind of data in them so it's kind of structure if if, if you if you like structure as you uh, have encountered with uh, before in fortran or uh, yeah port in fortran it's called struct so it's some it's like that s t r u c t something like that so struct can contain any kind of variables in them so here i have so if if, if i think of this hirex dictionary so hirex is an experiment uh, that is um, i mean that is almost been built in south africa and this is um, experiment for 21 cm intensity mapping for, for for those measurements so 
it has the name hyrax and some some numbers so t tot is the total observation time and so on i mean the, these numbers are not that important but still so but once i do that once i define a dictionary in this way i can i can access any of the any of the attributes so for example hyrax has lower redshift of 0 0.8 it's here so it's the and then if, if i type name it will give me hyrax if i type um let's say f sky so it it gives me 0.36 so it's that useful so one possible application of it is that so you can uh, you can have so for example in my case you can have different uh, persons in the class so those persons will have certain age those persons will have certain address those persons will have uh, weight or marks in a in a given subject and and so on so all that all that information can be stored in in such things so so let's say uh, something like this let's say rahul equals and and this is dictionary so i can say uh, maybe um, name so this is rahul kothari and maybe you can write uh, designation so that's a postdoctoral researcher and then you can write maybe a university affiliation so then it would be uh, let's say uwc and so on okay so so then i have made a new dictionary called rahul and then i can access various elements so let's say what is so rahul is the name of the dictionary and these are its attributes so designation it will give me post up so in that way so perhaps i'm not able to really explain the usefulness but but uh, this might sound a bit advanced but as you will start uh, writing programs in python you will find it very handy okay so now now perhaps the most important part for you so matplotlib so how how powerful matplotlib i mean for plotting purposes and what it can do so okay so so let so let me not explain the program right now but let me explain you what it can do okay so i'm i'm just running the program the program has has now run and it gives you this so can you see the plot now yes sir i can so 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 yeah so you so you can see uh, this is what it, this is what it gives so so let me now explain various parts of the program so this is the title as you can see this is the title and this is the insert so perhaps in in some of the plots we may need to provide some more details of some given parts then then python can also do that so or rather matplotlib so this is the insert that it has drawn and i'll explain how how it came about and this is the legend so p1 is some uh, plot plot 1 and plot 2 and you can see this is in latex p1 and that's a, that has gone in the uh, subscript so one has gone in the subscript and two has gone in the subscript and and you have also x the the x axis level okay so now let me explain how i did that so as so as i said by default um, it will not uh, load this matplotlib so i am importing matplotlib as plt you, you you can you can also use some something else maybe say rahul even that would work but it's it's quite common to use it use it as plt because then it would uh, be easy to identify what i'm importing okay and and this is the font specification like what kind of font do you want to use so here i have specified the font and then so this is where the plotting starts okay so and 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 these are various uh, methods inside plt so i have used matplotlib.pyplot as plt and these are various uh, various methods so so this is first so since i'm using only one plot so there will only be one plot so that's why i i will i'll just leave it blank but otherwise if you want to let's say uh, where is that let's say do this oh, i'm sorry yeah let's say if you want to do this Uh, making subplots 
then you may need to make some changes but then we will not do it today and 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 you can explore if you want to okay so then uh, again i have let me just do this let me hmm, okay this is better okay so okay uh, and then i have used x data from minus pi to plus pi as you can see from here and then y1 or the plot one is um sin x plus x okay so let me show you what it is doing so let me just print and it can also uh, do a latex printing here so so it's y equals sin x plus x i think it should work oh it's not working oh fine it maybe it doesn't work this way anyway okay and the other plot is uh, 1 over 1 plus x square so maybe i should write it now so the okay so this one is It's not working anyway. Okay, so first plot is sin x plus x. The second plot is one over one plus x square. So these are the, so these are those plots. So what I've done here, first of all, I made the plot. So so these are the plots. Uh, so I have specified this is the x data, this is the y data, and the label should be p one. So this is what I've appeared here. So if I make it, um, maybe let's say p alpha. Let's say if I make it p alpha. Then it will also appear. So you so you will change. So you will you will see a change here. Okay. So so watch, watch carefully now. Hmm. You see it has changed now to alpha. Okay. And maybe I can make it beta. Or I can even raise the power. Let's say and make it gamma. And you will see a change here now. You see a change here. So so the Python can also handle LaTeX programming. And it, it can also handle latex codes and then this line specifies how many columns do we want to have so here we specify that the font size should be 10 the legend should be in the lower right so lower and the right and it can also change the lo location so lower center now it will come in between or i can even change the number of columns so let's say i make it one and maybe on the right so it will come here okay and it does not look good so i'll just make it one again hmm. or maybe two okay so this is how it is and matlab gives you even more functionality you can even change the thickness of these plots so you can change the thickness of these plots you can make them dotted you can make them dash dot etc etc so it has a lot of functionality and you can even write on the plots so that that's not covered here but maybe uh, that can be discussed in some other uh, some other day or some other talk but but uh, that so 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 what is the um, summary you can do almost everything that, that you that you can ever imagine that you that a pl that a plot can have or plot rather should have okay and then this thing uh, so here i've written x so maybe here so it, so it is this and if, if I change it, uh, so let's say I'll write. So it, it changes to this x data. So so this is a LaTeX code for for writing x data, and and data should not be italic. Okay. Uh, and then the next thing is how to how to get this. So okay, maybe I may, maybe I'll I'll not really explain what uh, how how this came about, but then the important thing is it can be done okay and then so here you so you, here you can specify the limits so what are the for example uh, limits of this inset so here i've here i've said that it should go from minus 0.2 to 0.7 and the y range should be 0 0.2 to 1 minus 0.2 to 1.2 and this and if you include this it will give you this zoom thing here okay and and also the uh, this thing 
the title so here i'm written a fun with plot so maybe um maybe I, I can change it to a bit more and then and then you can also write some some more things here so, so here i've written this one with plots a bit more okay and then one important thing is it will give you a pdf so pdf are really very extremely useful for for uh, for uh, for latex document so you can directly embed the pdf in the latex document and the your document looks exceptionally beautiful so so here so okay so i'm already showing this so and it will save uh, this plot so let's say this this is what you will this is what the plot will look like and it will save it on the desktop so this is that plot so that's why whenever i'm changing making changes here it's getting updated in this plot okay so so as i said um, latex is also supported text can also be placed so so if you do google search you can easily find how to how to put uh, text on this so may, maybe i can show you some more examples let me show you perhaps it would be useful so these are some of the examples that i have used so 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 you can see this so all these have been generated using latex code oh i'm sorry late not not the sorry, python code and there and you can also so um, and, and and you can also put grid lines so here i have put the grid lines and perhaps i want to show you that it can also write also maybe i'm not able to find it not of anyway it does not matter so so the moral is it, it can do almost anything that you can thought of so so maybe uh, i'll make one more change here so mm -hmm. okay so let me do one more thing so so now uh, so I'll I'll set y label to just y. So it it will again change. So 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 you will see y data here. You see you can see y data here. Okay, it has appeared now. So it, it, it this is x data, and this is y data. Okay. So now let us move forward. So now let me talk about scipy. Let me talk about scipy. So SciPy has also a lot of functionalities. So, so here I've directly imported all the functions that I'm going to use. So, so this is, uh, so SciPy can perform interpolation. SciPy also has special functions in it. So, so here I've defined the spherical Bessel function here and the associated Legendre polynomials, PLM, if you recall, it can also perform integration. So here I've done, the integration of sin x from 0 to pi so this is what the integrand is so so this is what the code looks like so i'm i'm importing integrate from scipy integrate here okay and it has uh, so integration can be done through different methods so there are quadrature methods there there are uh, trapezoidal method and so on so so you can uh, see the list um, of all the of, of all the possibilities so it should be available it, it, it is very easily available on, on the internet so then you you write what is to be integrated upon so let's say you have to integrate over sin x from 0 to pi and these are some of the conditions so depending upon what kind of accuracy do you want okay and this is you okay so let me first run this so if you run this uh, you will get this you will get this so as as expected the answer is 2 and this is the error so it's extremely accurate answer but but um, but depending upon whether the um, integrand you are using has has many oscillations so you may have to change these numbers but then in our case because the arts is a very simple case so that's why we don't even have to specify these things so we'll get um, decent answer but it depends upon the application it depends upon your application okay so this is what you get and then you can also perform interpolation so interpolation means that you have let's say data at some specific points so let's say in, in your in your experiment you have got data uh, in uh, on a specific point and you want to determine the value in between those points then you use interpolation 
okay so next thing is pandas so pandas is used for writing and reading purposes okay so 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 this shows an example so so again you have to import pandas so here i'm importing pandas as pd and these are again the methods in the uh, in in this thing so so i'm reading this uh, file fg cross sdcsv and which is located at this location so after reading the file maybe i have to make plot of it so i've done this plot so when i run this when, so when i run this file i get this and this will again be saved on the desktop as you can see here so when i run this file this is saved on the desktop so i can make changes in the file and maybe because it is a way, uh, it, it has a lot of oscillations so maybe i can uh, smooth the curve and so on so all these things are there in, in python okay so so this was importing the file and you can also export a file so this is how to export the file so let's say you have done some analysis in your code and you want to export that file somewhere so let me just give me a second okay so 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 this is the bare minimum code um so let's say you are uh, evaluating this function z is a function of x and y and x lies between 0 and 1 y also lies between 0 and 1 and you want to save this data that z is a function of x and y so 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 this is the the, the bare minimum code the the minimal code and so it will uh, it will do something like this okay so let me show you what it can do so uh, no, i'm not running the running the program so the program is run and it generates this file so as you can see it has saved the file in this way so 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 these are the z values and these these are the x values and these are the y values okay so so it has done the job and one final thing would be curve fitting so even uh, python has also this functionality of curve fitting okay so okay so so let's say you have to fit the function a a e, a e to the power of minus bx plus c so this is your fitting function and then you and then and let's say you have the data in your file and then you can import the file first and then make a fitting so 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 this is what you get so this is the data that you had and and this is the plot or this is the function you want to fit so yeah i mean so uh, today we have tried to cover the basic um, so if, if you have not done uh, programming before this might seem a bit advanced but if you just start doing it explore something and at least i mean start uh, using it in your research or your work then you then you will find all these things um, a bit more useful and and you will become more comfortable as as the time progresses so okay thank you thank you for it uh, i have a question yeah please uh, what is curve fitting curve fitting uh okay so so let me give an example of curve fitting so curve fitting is let's say you um let's say you you throw a ball okay uh, and then you can measure the x and y coordinates of the ball at, at a given point of time so you just keep measuring the x coordinate and the y coordinate of the ball but from the newton's equations you already know that the path is going to be a parabola but because of noise whatever and your experimental um, limitations or instrumental limitations that would that would not exactly be a parabola uh, that will be kind of deviation but then but then you know it already that that the curve is going to be a parabola so you will say uh, so you will find so you will say let's say the the, the curve would be uh, say y equals a x uh, sorry a x square plus b into x plus c so you will find the values so you so you try to fit a curve that passes through those points and determine the values of a b and c so this is curve fitting okay so you have to remove the uh, extra noise and the uh, extra things and so that your curve can be look like a parabola no 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 not not like that not like that so you see um 
uh, what could be a better example? So, so, so what I'm saying is, we already know from uh, from from our analysis that the path is going to be a parabola, and parabola has this equation. You have three unknowns, a, b, and c. So, what are the values of a, b, and c such that uh, the cu the curve become optimized. I mean, optimization or op optimized curve has a very precise meaning. Which uh, so so I'm not going into that, but 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 I would request you to take that meaning uh, intuitively. So the the best curve that passes through all those points. Are you getting the point? Mm, yes, yes. So, mm, okay. So, so then curve fitting would mean you have to determine a, b, and c, which are not a priori known, and these. Of course, would determine because these would depend upon the acceleration due to gravity or initial velocity, initial angle of projection, etc. Okay. Any okay. other question? Okay. Yeah. So that might be your first exposure to Python, but uh, that um, that should not really stop you from asking question, or, or perhaps you can ask that whether python can do this for you or not so you can so even if you are that uh, so even those questions would be legitimate uh, so so you can ask me can python do that can python do this can python do that any question of that sort nikhil yanti there is a question uh, like uh, re Ah, Rahul bhai, this, uh, uh, this, this thing uh, I, I have uh, practiced after your instruction. Mm -hmm. So I did try to do some fitting of my that uh, magnetization data. Mm -hmm. So at least whatever you said, it is always uh, uh, useful. Always. Yeah, yeah. But so See, far, uh, I, have, I have no question. Okay. No, so, so, so what I'm maybe saying... Maybe bit advanced to tell I can. Yeah, yeah. maybe. So, so what I'm saying is, uh, if you stop using, let's say, origin. So, if you, uh, I mean, so, but, so, so, let's say you have uh, decided to stop using origin, then you have to find some other way. But if you like uh, keep yeah. using origin, then you uh, okay. Let me pause the. Uh, 